everybody. This is Scott Hutzbath with Agent Mastermind, and I'm so honored to have you guys here. I'm here with a uh, uh, an expert in the in the real estate arena when it comes to photography. His name's uh, Larry Lorman. Hope I said that right, Larry. How you doing, buddy? That's right. Good. So uh, I was just talking to Larry a little bit before the class, and um, Larry has been doing all video or excuse me photography since the 70s when back in the day when we had the dark room and that's uh, that's pretty cool stuff so I don't know if he's still doing any of that but that's that's kind of neat to see it in the movie sometimes but been doing real estate seriously for the last 10 years with his wife uh, was actually a licensed real estate um, broker in from 99 to 2011 now he just helps his wife with, with, with photography and he's granted us uh, been so kind to grant us his time and expertise uh, sharing with us the uh, what he's done to help real estate agents. He has a very interesting blog that a lot of people have already commented about. So, Larry, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you take it from there. And again, I sincerely appreciate you being here. And um, let's let's see what you got for us. I got my notepad here. Okay. Well, thanks, Scott. Right. Yeah, Scott said I um, I I got into this business because my wife has been a long time realtor. She started in the mid '80s. And um, I did. I helped her with photography around the edges, and and in 1999 I quit Boeing and joined her team uh, to help her out. And my job uh, got to be uh, the online marketing, the website, tours. Tours were just just starting in 1999, and uh, and the photography and. Um, so uh, I actually started the blog in 2005, and the reason I started is to help the uh, the folks in her office. I get all sorts of questions; they want me to help them with this and that, and I didn't have much time um, besides doing my, my wife's marketing. So I started this little blog and. Posted every once a week or so, and would tell them on things they should be doing. And uh, since then, the thing is, the blog has grown. So now I have about thirty thousand readers a month in one hundred and sixty countries. Wow! And which <laughs> the, the thing that amazed me at first was wow that um, that the same stuff works every place. <laughs> There are people yeah, in Australia, right. Australia right. New Zealand, very popular there. In fact, Australia is is the they are most passionate of any place on earth about real estate photography. Okay, um, they they really have it. <laughs> anyway, the purpose of the blogs is to just help people be successful at real estate photography, and. Um, uh, what that comes down to is, and it took me a while to figure this out. At first, I thought I was just talking to real estate agents, but um, it turned out after I started taking some polls that the readership of my blog was about a third of agents and about two thirds professional real estate photographers who just do real estate photography uh, professionally and make a living out of it. And that's going on all over the world, and um, uh, there are a lot of people wanting to get into this. To and, and there's a lot of agents that want to do it themselves. And some agents want to are that are technical enough uh, want to do it themselves. Others would just rather hire somebody else. Don't want to get into the technical stuff. Right. Um, and so what the, it, it act, the, the blog is actually more than a blog. It's kind of a community because in 2007, I started a Flickr group um, with people that aren't familiar with Flickr. It's a place to post your photos and, and then discuss them. So it's kind of, it has a kind of like a forum and, and people just comment on each other's photos. And I started out in 2007, and now has almost 9,000 members in it, and they are some of the best real estate 
photographers in the world. Some of them are just beginning, and it's a basically a 24 by 7 uh, educational place because uh, the beginners learn from the more experienced ones, and the, it's just amazing to see right. the help people give each other. And, Amen. Um, so just just so everybody knows, um, Larry has this uh, PDF that he just updated, actually, and so he's going to go over the PDF instead of a PowerPoint. So and I want to do a real quick check to make sure everybody can see his screen. He's going to be covering this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, actually, it's a, actually a PDF. I'm so used to using PowerPoint, but it's a PDF version. He's going to um, he's going to give this to everybody if you don't already have it, and also he's going to show you, show you where you can get it on his website. So um, there we go. Okay, so this is um, the title of this is is um, what real estate agents need to know about photography, and really it's um, um, agent listing agents should know this this kind of thing, home sellers should know it, and real estate photographers should know it. I find that um, a number of Quite a few actually beginning real estate photographers don't know some of this, and um, so it's important information. And this is this is a um, uh, this has been a really popular. As it, Scott says, I, I give it away on the on the blog. There's a on the left hand sidebar. There's a white uh, link to click on. It's it, where you get this and. Um, it has been so popular, it's now in four other languages besides English. Okay. And um, it is kind of a, a description, kind of a description of what, what real estate photography should look like. And, and not so much how to do it. My other books go into more how to do it, and that's what we focus on the blog. Um, but this, uh, and as I say, we I give this away. Uh, a lot of real estate photographers use this as a marketing tool to market real estate agents, and to by explaining you know what they do for them and what hiring a professional real estate photographer does for you. Um, so I'll move right into it here. Um, All right. I've I've got a. I'm displaying it here in two-page mode, so the the left hand is the is one one page, and the right hand is another page. Um, okay, perfect. So to start with, um, anyone that's that is interested in marketing uh, nowadays, marketing real estate. Uh, should go on and get go through the process of what a real home buyer does, and of course I don't need to tell um, agents that you know a huge I I, I think that the study showed 92 percent of home buyers start on the internet. I mean that's a given nowadays, but right. the process that they that you have to go through as a home buyer is kind of instructive. And uh, what, what you know, basically, what you do is you go on a website like Realtor.com, Zillow, your broker site, wherever it is, and you know, put in some, you know, put in a price range, a neighborhood, whatever, and you may get a hundred, a hundred properties that fit that description. And of course, you have so the home buyer has to continually be focusing that down. And but what, in, in that process, what will happen? I don't know if you can see my uh, my cursor there. Yeah. But okay, great. So in this in this bottom left corner is a typical kind of page you'll see, which you'll see a a listing. Or you'll see a the primary external photo from the MLS. And and almost all MLSs, of course, have a rule that that very first photo has to be the primary external 
photo, and they kind of treat that specially, and that all that always becomes the the little thumbnail that you see, and uh, and you'll you'll see the probably the address and you know maybe a few words along the side, but you'll the the, the thing you know about this is that this little thumbnail and some of them are really small, some of them are bigger than others, is kind of like a like a, a lure, a fisherman's lure. I mean, the better the home look, because you're, the buyer is, is in a hurry going through hundreds of these things, and they're going to be attracted to not only the price, but what looks good in the, so that's one of the reasons I, I'll go into later about um, external, uh, how the external photo is the one of the most important things of the listing, but we'll go into that more. But this is an example of where that where that comes into play is um, is when a when a viewer is or a home buyer is initially looking. Frequently, that's the only photo they see until they they do a lot more clicking in their searching. So. Okay, so, that, so that so that hey, hey Larry, can you do me a uh, just a small favor? Can you um just to make this bigger for the people that are on the call? Can you uh, close out your webcam and then it'll actually make this picture bigger for the people that are watching? If you click on the webcam button over there, it'll just close that down and then it'll make it so that that what we're looking at here is uh, is a bigger size. Oh, click on See this that over there. Where uh, it's under audio and it says webcam, you might have to open it up and then. See that there? Well, here, here's, how about, if you see, see where it says share my webcam? Oh, uh, no, it's, yeah, I, I lost it here. Under, uh, it's on your GoTo meeting thing. It says you have screen sharing, dashboard, attendees, audio, webcam. Oh, yeah, webcam. Question. Yeah, and then if you click on that button, it'll just shut it off, and then it'll make this make this bigger for the people. There we go. There we go. Much better. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I can see it a lot better now. Thank you. Okay. So that so you were saying so what I got out of that is what you're saying that first picture is like the the one that is going to catch the attention of whoever's looking at the on the MLS. Right, and the, this is it varies a lot depending on the website. Um, but almost all real estate websites emphasize that first photo and treat it specially. And it may be a thumbnail. It may be that that's all they show you. And then there will be some little thumbnails of other the rest of the photos underneath. But that initial photo becomes super important for marketing. And you want to you want to put a lot of time and energy into making that look really good. Cool. The uh, the next thing is the, this is kind of a, an overview, this next section, the basics of visual psychology. The, these four items, kind of the overall thing of the ten essentials that I'm, I'm going to talk about, they are that, um, number one, that people like to look at in pictures that are light and bright. They don't like dark caves. So having having photos light and bright, and actually it turns out um, real estate photos tend to be, you want them a little brighter than than the place really looks. So, um, so, so that's an important factor. And that becomes actually one of the one of the key things for real estate photographers is how do you how do you deal with the lighting? And there's a couple ways to do that. I'm not going to go into it today, uh, but it's a huge factor. The the second item there, disorienting disorienting interiors. That is, if you see a picture, and we'll we'll go into this in more detail or have examples where anything is kind of weird looking, where the the verticals are off, the horizontals are off. Yeah, uh, the colors Corners are corners and squares. Yeah, yeah. You, you, your attention, a viewer's attention picks that up, 
and grabs onto that and it distracts them, you, you kind of have to think about each one of these photos is kind of a little story and that you're telling about the space you're showing or the property. And what you want to do is eliminate uh, as many of the distractions as possible. And those disoriented things like weird perspective and verticals and what have you become those distractions. The third thing here, composition, this is, is really um, important too. And some, I find that some photographers have a kind of a natural feeling for composition. They, can, they seem to figure it out and just do, do it automatically. And they, they even have a difficult time talking about what it is they're doing. But um, what you include and what you exclude um, is, is huge about telling the story of the space you're trying to tell. And I, I have this monthly contest on the blog where the t all the top real estate photographers compete in. And they just obsess about composition, and and that's now what does, you com get. does composition have anything to do with panoramic photos or not, or is that more of uh, like uh, no, no? Does composition have anything to do with that? No, it's panoramic photos are are actually kind of a whole different story. They okay. They used to be much more popular than they are. They're really I used to. I used to do eight 360s for every listing we had. I, I don't even do them anymore because okay, uh, so it's not the just, top of the top, not not the not the hot topic anymore. Because yeah, I know, man, every, all these cameras do them automatically now, which is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and the last item is kind of the things I was talking about before: the distractions. You want to remove all the distractions you can that aren't essential. Um, to telling the story about this space. You don't want dogs in there. You don't want miscellaneous right. towels hanging on the refrigerator. Uh, you don't want people, because if there's a person in there, people will just, it grabs their attention and they don't look right. into themselves. So, right on. so these are kind of some of the overriding principles. And then, uh, then the next page on the right um, is a, I go into, um, the fact that well, one of the things I want to cover, like at the top, I was reading it said multiple studies have shown that homes marketed with professional photography get more showings, and therefore the property sells faster and for more. That's the most right. Significant he says from Redfin, which is a good publication, that it indicates that a home sells for anywhere from nine hundred to one hundred sixteen thousand USD more. So, or nine hundred to yeah. So so which um. That's a great point to make. So do you see, like, like do you see, I don't know, it's obviously the better it looks to me. The, like it's, I, always, I always reference everything like a menu at a restaurant. If there's no pictures, I, I'm looking at what, what stuff is when it comes by. So the better the pictures, probably the better, um, the more wanting to see the property than you're, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. The, in the end, the, the job of the photography is to create showings where right. buyers actually come out there and go through the home, and so right. you you want to you want to make it look good. You know, some agents are worried, oh, we don't make it look too good. I I don't think you have to worry about making it look too good. Um, just make it look the very best you can. And this um, this first paragraph that Scott just read was is exactly is the summary. This info, uh, what do you call it, this infographic along the right side is by a, uh, a, a, a realtor in, in North Carolina had this created and this is a summary of this, this uh, okay. Redfin study. Now this, I wanted to point out that in the in the PDF that's currently right this minute on my blog, this link doesn't work. But okay. it, 
the the same link is at the on the last page, and it does work. Okay. Okay. So when I get done here, I'm going to fix this link. Fix that one. Okay, perfect. Uh, and so um, the the one the PDF that Scott will be giving away will will be correct. Will right be on. correct, and the one you know after a few hours on my blog will also be correct. But anyway, the the idea is that you know starting at about two hundred thousand dollars, you know it 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 gets an extra nine hundred. Uh, dollars in in net sales, or, or, or professional huge, quality, huge, yeah, huge increase, small, yeah, all the way up to you know eight hundred thousand and above. If you're you're talking about like sixteen thousand, and plus you you the property is selling for forty seven percent more per price per square foot, and you're getting sixty one percent more views, and so that that's really kind of the essence of what's going on here, what we're talking about. Sure. And I think it's also worth noting uh, this this section down here that um, the other thing to a listing agent, and and I saw this with my I I love to go to listing presentations with my wife and kind of just sit there and watch the home sellers and and. You know, when she was presenting, you know, this is what we're going to do for you, and there there isn't a home seller out there that doesn't instantly recognize that photography and, and showing off your home is is super important. And what I found that uh, what would happen is we would have these these flyers, these fancy flyers that had full page of their home on the on the front with you know some text floated on the top and we would have everyone in the neighborhood almost grab one of you know I'd put a hundred out and and they'd be gone in the first day and we would have people coming back a year later to my wife saying Levi we want you join your we want you to do this and sell our home and the the idea here is that Good photography gets you more listings, and and the neighborhood watches uh, various agents that are selling their neighbor's home, and sure. they they are going to go to the agent that does the best job of marketing. Um, here's a here's a great question from Terry Hunter, which I I would love to get your answer to. I use a wide angle, which makes the space look bigger than it may look in person. Should the photos tease or fully describe the home? In any case, I don't do documentaries, but rather glamour shots. Um, no little bath, small, nondescript bedrooms. What is your take on that? Yeah, that's a, um, that's a great question. In fact, we are on the blog. We argue that that um, that subject a lot. In fact, um, the, and and the the answer is that. One of the most important things in real estate photography equipment is that wide-angle lens, and and yes, you absolutely must have a wide-angle lens. There are situations where you can overdo it. I mean, you can get a you can get a 14 millimeter uh, lens, and I, when I first got my 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 16 millimeter, the lens that went out to 16 millimeters, my wife used to ball me out every time I'd come home. And she said, that's not what it looks like. That looks like a bowling alley. And she'd send me oh. back to shoot it again. So, yeah, there's some room, like small bathrooms, where they are absolutely essential. Small, small bathrooms, small bedrooms, things where if you don't have a super wide angle lens, you can't really even show it. And we're I'm right. gonna have some examples of that later on because that's one of the ten essentials. That's what I was gonna say. Like the next slide, you got the ten essentials. You want to cover the ten essentials to uh, let's see. It says here are the ten essential principles that you can use to give your marketing photos maximum effectiveness. Right. So going on to the next section here, the, the ten essentials. Each one of these is a is a key principle, and the first one. The primary purpose of the mark 
real estate marketing code is to present the features of the property. And I give an example here where this is the same room and I, uh, actually I, the, the one with the red X mean, means that's not, you're not supposed to do it this way and the one with the, the green check means that's the one you're supposed to. The guy that translated it into Russian came up with that technique and I really like it. Uh, so, so the uh, yes and no, like no on the top, yes on the bottom, is because like it focuses more on what the home has to offer because of the fireplace, and then you're sitting like so you're visualizing sitting on a couch, looking at the fireplace, and looking outside more right. so than just sitting in a living room with like there's no focus on the fireplace. I mean that's a huge difference in pictures right there. It looks like a totally different house. Right, and and, and ex the story behind this particular photo is that. This is a home we. This is our longtime home in Issaquah, Washington, that we sold, and this is the actual listing. This is the first list, the photo that I took of the rec room, and my wife saw it and said that her comment was, "The whole point of this room is that we fixed up this fireplace. We did, we did this fantastic um, treatment of the fireplace." And these wind, these windows to the exterior. Yeah, huge, that's huge a, difference. Right. That's the story now, you, would you put point. both, or you, would you only put the one? Would you put no, I, both pictures? I would only use this. Um, this one, okay, all right, because that's yeah, much so this, more inviting, much more. This um, is actually a better listing because it. Now, if, if for example, you wanted to, you might have a second listing photo, because you know someone would say, well. The other feature is that you've got these cabinets and bookcase, you, so you could have another one, but it would be but better to show yeah. that as a right. separate photo. Sure. Explain yeah. this bed one. I, I, I personally, yeah, like, I mean, obviously I see more of the top one, I think, but showing the whole bedroom, like, with the window in there was huge. Now, is this a wide end, wide lens length angle compared yeah, to not a wide end? I mean, how does, what's the, why the big difference here? This is the this is the the wide angle lens one. Okay. Okay. And this is okay. why, for real estate photography, you you can't use an iPhone, or you can't use a point and shoot camera, because if you use an iPhone or a point and shoot camera, you're going to get a shot that looks like the top one. The bottom one is is using a, a wide angle lens. And by what I'm, I have up, the explanation up here, what I mean between, as a wide angle lens, it's between 14 and 24 millimeters effective focal length. And, um, and so you, you, you see the whole bedroom, basically, whereas here... Absolutely. You know, Huge. Totally, yeah. total difference, yes. Yes. So it's, it's a big difference. Yeah, big difference. I, I like that. I, mean, I don't see a problem with this top one on the right-hand side here with all these clothes and stuff laying around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I exaggerate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some, of these, right. some of these Overdo are exaggerated. Yeah. The listing agents out here will understand this one. This one. This is for listing agents. This is the most difficult problem you probably encounter. Is this thing of remove clutter and stage interior for best results? Well, sometimes that's easier said than done. This particular, right, right. you got to get a dumpster for that one to list that one. You gotta get a dumpster. Oh, yeah. Smokes. And the, I mean, the worst case is when you have a rental where you've got renters in there during the showing process. The renters don't care if this house sells. In fact, they'd rather it didn't sell. Yeah. So they're not going to cooperate. But you basically have to. The listing agent um, has to actively work with the home seller and make sure, I mean, most people don't know about getting rid of clutter, about taking the pictures off of the refrigerator in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. taking magnets, the, refrigerator magnets, yeah. Right, taking all those magnets, or taking the, the, the dish towel off the refrigerator, all this kind of stuff. Little stuff like that, yeah. Here's, a, Allison has a good question. She says, I have a full-framed Canon 6D camera. I don't know if you know what that is, but... Do I still need a wide-angle lens? Yep. And, okay. and that's and you want a lens in. Oh, here it is, right 14, here. Okay. Twenty-four millimeters. 
So length of between 14 and 24 million. Okay, length is with a wide enough angle. So this, so this PDF will tell her shoots interiors don't usually come with off the shelf or point. Okay, cool. Okay, great. great yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the only way you can get a wide angle lens is you've got to have a DSLR and buy the lens separately. And my my blog has a a page, a lens page on the top that that gives suggestions. You know, so if we should, if Allison has a 6D, she can go to that page and it recommends what are the the good lenses for real estate photography. You know, here Casey Wells is asking a great question. She said, um, w w "Can you recommend an entry level camera that would uh, let's see? I'll just read it as uh, um, a good entry level camera would be that has a wide angle lens that you can buy. Do you have any recommendations for that? That's a great question." Yeah, in fact, yeah. My uh, there's actually some some posts on my blog, but what I recommend is a is a Canon T3i Rebel, okay. which is about four or five hundred dollars on T3i, um, all right, on Amazon, and all Canon right. has a new lens that for that for that camera. That's it's called a 10 to 18 millimeters. It can, just okay. came out at the beginning of the year, and we've been on the blog. We've been talking about it, and it is it is a knockout lens for real estate photography, and it's about three hundred dollars. So the whole package, you know, is going to be about eight hundred dollars. Very nice. And, and okay. that's that's kind of what you've got to spend to do real estate photography. Okay. Awesome. There you go. You want to repeat that one more time? What was the Canon? I think I got it. Canon Rebel Canon T3? T3i Rebel. T3i. Okay. Canon Rebel T3i. All right. Yep. They're right now on Amazon for uh, 549 Yep. And um, that's 18 MP. Okay, cool. All right. And then the lens to go with it is what? Is a Canon 10 to 18 millimeter. Okay. It, it's made specific specifically for that camera. Works great, and okay. it's it's been getting reviews as one of the best lenses for real estate photography. There you go. Okay. Let's see, I found that, but I am not okay. Uh, 289 on that one. Yep. Okay. Awesome. All right, I'll save those. I'll post them on the I'll post them on the Facebook private group. So if you're if you're joining us for the first time and you want, I'll uh, I'll post some of the stuff he's talking about that might not be in his uh, PDF that we're going to also get away give away. Um, I'll post these sites with these cameras that he recommends, and you guys can check them out, of course, and do all the reviews and fun stuff like that. Also on my blog, there there are articles. Uh, there are the most popular articles along the right hand side. It has links to there's one that that recommends um, that has these kind of recommendations in it. Okay, cool. Awesome. And it has more details. Okay, great. Okay, the next one more one more question uh, before you go. Like you can go to the okay. next page, but the question uh, Ladon Weston, appreciate you joining us here today. Says, would you suggest a flash or natural lighting? I've heard of special light bulbs for good lighting. Yeah, I would. Um, I would recommend a flash, as at least a sing. To do it well, you need more than one flash. But to do it adequately, you can get by with with a flash, okay. with a single flash. And it it can't be a flash that's built in. It has to be an external flash. You know that Got it. That, that comes off. Yeah. All right. What's number? Okay, the next oh, one. Oh, uh, yeah, renders interior light and bright. Yeah, tell me the difference between these two pictures. Why? Like, I like the, the bottom picture. Well, you're you're ahead of it. The the next one is the number four. We're still in oh, page. Okay, five. no, oh, pro, oh, four. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Is the, primary the, interior. Shot. Okay. The thing about primary external shot is the most important photo, <clears throat> and this in this example, this is a home that we sold in about 2001 or 2002, and um, it, it had a really, it was a really nice home, 
It was almost a million dollars, I think. It, but the front of it just looked awful. It was really cramped. The driveway had all these cracks in it. All you could see in the front were these, you know, at this triple car garage. And you couldn't get, I couldn't back away because there was this, this uh, cement wall and then it's this steep embankment going down a, a big hill. And so I struggled and struggled with how to shoot this home. And I ended up coming back about four or five times to get, this was the, the photo that I ended up with. And what happened is I finally realized that I, I could walk up behind this house in the woods behind the home, look out over the top, and you could see the fact that this is looking out towards Renton here, Absolutely. Renton, Washington. And you, the, yeah. the thing had a, a view, actually. And it took me several times because this was November in Seattle, and <laughs> you, you have to wait for the right day. But right. anyway, this is an example of where putting a, a lot of time into that first photo, and the, the, the story that goes along with this is, is that what I used to do is, is I'd love to go to the the inspections when we sell the home and then talk to the home buyer and ask them and I did that on this one I I asked the home buyer what did you, how did you get to this home what did what did you how did you find it and why did you like it and the la the lady pulls out the the printout of of the website that she saw it on and the only thing on that website was this photo really <laughs> She said, I took this to my realtor and I said, we want to go see this home. <laughs> oh, very so, good. Yeah, yeah. Big difference in a like, huge difference in pictures there. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Now, you know, it's fun. You know, you've said a couple things that kind of like, like one is like back on a couple, like a little bit ago, you said you, you talked about a story and man, I'm telling you that is so, so important when writing the descriptions and taking the photos to tell a story. But now you just told another one where you asked the seller why they bought this house, and they showed you a picture that that recognized, you know, that, that brought them to this house and said, "I got to see this house." So, that, I mean, guys, that's so important to talk to your sellers about what brought them to their home. I mean, you, and you guys might already be doing this, but when you find out why they bought it, you're probably going to find another buyer that's going to have the same wants or so, um, and maybe not. But I mean, a lot of times, look at look at what happened. The one the one seller bought it, and somebody else, you know. So it's just stories are everything when you're when you're doing photos and stories and stuff like that, descriptions. Yeah, and I found that the uh, a, a great place to to talk to the to the buyers of your listing is the inspection. I mean, other you know, you, the buyer's agent doesn't doesn't want you talking to their buyers really. Right, right. And and but at the inspection, you know, it's some some buyers agents don't like the listing agents coming to the the inspection, but I've only got out of hundreds that I went to, um, I only got asked to leave once, and I found it incredibly illuminating almost every time by just talking, you know, having time because the the buyers are just wandering around, you know, wasting time waiting for the inspector. Right. Okay. And the number, five, and the number five is like part here and part here. So why don't we go to like show the pictures? Because I think it, like it's isn't it on? Uh... Well, the, the next thing I want to do is is go out to my my website. Oh, your website. Okay, cool. Uh, right. Because um, I had had a um, had a request from. Oh yeah, Twilight, Twilight Aaron photos. Yes. Morell Aaron. To do Aaron Morell, uh, thank you. Man, what a beautiful home there. Beautiful picture. Okay, th this is one of the first um, Twilight shots that I did, and um, one of the things about Twilight shots that th not only are they really dramatic in marketing uh, your property, th they look good in that little in that little um, thumbnail. Awesome. They look good if if that's the only picture that that the the real estate website is showing. Right. And um, 
they just grab people's attention. And they're really quite easy to do. The, the key to doing one of these is, is to sh show up at the right time. And basically, yeah, right. you, turn, you turn on all the lights, and you sh there's a period of about 15 minutes before to, uh, sunset to about 15 minutes after uh, sunset, which is called twilight. That, that half an hour in there is called twilight. And that's when you, the time you're supposed to turn on your headlights when you're driving. But this, that's when you show up, and you... This this picture was a little late. It's it's a little dark here in some spots, but um, uh, and, and many real estate photographers nowadays have um, have got have raised this to a, a real science. They will they will illuminate uh, use flash to illuminate these and make really good. But if you're doing this yourself, it's not that hard. Uh, so. Cool. There's a so you got a half hour window or so is what you're saying. Yeah, there's about a half hour window. Now this listing is an example of one. The, the home sellers came to my wife, and because they saw the previous photo, and they said, and they saw this, they saw that on her website, and said, we want you to sell our house because of that photo. Wow. And uh, wow. so again, the same thing. I, you just turn on all the lights, and there's another another critical f factor here in this one that wasn't so much a factor in the previous one it, that you can't really tell. But if if you if you study this, you can tell that I am not standing on the street. This is not a street level shot. You would, you you're up, would, you're standing up on something, right? You're, yeah. You raised yourself, okay. Now, and the, now, what I do is I have a Toyota pickup, and when I carry a one of these A-frame, one of these extension ladders that you can there you go. put it in half. I put it up there, and I can climb up to the top and straddle the, the thing. Beautiful, and, beautiful. And I can be basically 20 or 25 feet above the street. Um, and that's awesome. I never even thought about that. But Aaron Merrill's asking, did you use? And this might have been for the last picture, but did you use Lightroom in this picture? Is that a? Is that a? Actually, this picture was taken before Lightroom was invented. This was okay, about okay. Two thousand three, okay. and Lightroom. But yeah, you 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 use Lightroom to adjust. Uh, that's the the one piece of software that. A real That's an Adobe. Looks like an Adobe type thing. Adobe Lightroom. Adobe Lightroom. Okay. Yeah, it's about one hundred twenty-nine dollars, okay. and okay. really, it's all you need. And yeah. there's a video here that if you guys want to check it out, it's all I did was Google Lightroom, and Adobe Photoshop Lightroom comes up. It's really cool. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it does, but it's uh, yeah. So crazy stuff. It's just insane what you can do with photography. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. Picture. Okay, so. Um, Oh, the other, you see, th this is a twilight. Again, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm wrapping my pickup. And th another thing that's useful to, to know when you're taking shots is your front shots is that you, you usually don't want to to take it straight on. You want to take a, a what's called a three quarter view. This is this is a three quarter view. I'm not directly in front of the front door. I'm, I'm kind of off to the edge, looking, and the reason here is you, you want to be able to show what's going on over here because that's a big part of the story. All of these, these garages in this development are side load garages, and and you you get to see that you know all of this stuff is is an important part of the, the thing, of the, of the property. You know, Beautiful. This is the other one I want to, and this is the the photo that's on the front of the the PDF, and on okay. this listing, this is an example, another example of sometimes you don't want to take. Sometimes you want to take the back of the house and just call it the front. Okay. <laughs> this, in this case, 
the front of the house is just looks terrible. You know, it looks it's, like there's a road right next to it too, and like not real. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a busy whoops like. Anyway, you th there was a, a busy road in front. There was a s small, not much room, but you go around the back here, and you have this wonderful, uh, wooded view, and it's it makes a really nice shot. So anyway, I'll I don't, know, I don't know about you, but I like all the I, I like all the the lighted ones where at night, just before dusk, I think those. I mean, because these are all common pictures. I mean, these are great pictures, but. I don't know. There's something about that lighted picture at night with the house, the home yeah. set up that just draws my my attention. So absolutely, this it's a it's and and buyers and sellers feel feel exactly the same way. One yeah. other little one other little tip before we get off of this is on this home. Um, on this, the, the guy we were selling it for was a professional photographer, and this was again this was about. 2001 or 2002, and I was still learning the ropes then. And I I did a, fo a photo of his home, and he, after he saw what I did, he pulled me aside and he said, "I want to give you some advice." He says, "You go out, you use a polarizer, and this shot is taken with a." A polarizing filter, which is a filter you screw on the front of the lens, and it it basically has it's a has a screening effect that it only lets certain rays of the sun that are polarized a certain way come through. But what it does is it has it makes a wonderful color. It does really nice things to the color, and mm -hmm. and. Uh, Anyway, he pointed this out to me, and so anytime you're you're taking a shot in the sunlight, you can make it look way better by just using a polarizer. Okay. So much okay, stuff so. involved in gen photos, I didn't realize. Okay, so back to the PDF here, and now I'm going to go on to uh, r render homes light and bright. That's that's this principle. And these two examples um, show kind of what I mean is that this the top one is actually I mean it's it's this is my living room and, and this is what it looks like but this and this in a lot of ways is exaggerated but it basically is done by simply uh, a single flash bounced off the ceiling and when it bounces off the ceiling, it spreads the light around and it just flows all over and it lights everything and it doesn't make any, um, it doesn't give you wacky shadows that you would get if you just pointed straight at. So this so you have the flash pointing up towards the ceiling is what you did on this one. Yep. And, that's, how, and how high are the ceilings here? These are high ceilings. These are 22 foot ceilings. And so, it, so uh, the, and the reason I'm asking that is so it doesn't matter how high the ceilings are. No, no, it's it's not a problem. And so you that, shine the flash on the ceiling at the yeah. That's crazy. Okay, unbelievable. All right. Now the the next um, the next principle is is it's the one that real estate photographers and real estate agents have the most trouble with understanding and getting. And I've spent more time arguing about this than almost anything. And it is what what this comes from is it comes from the fact that in our daily life we live in an environment inside interiors where our brain knows that all the walls are perfectly straight up and down. Right. And when you look at a picture and you see like this top one and you see that the walls are kind of sloping in here and and you and the this thing is angled yeah. it it's a distraction your brain it, whether you realize it or not it's it's distracting your brain because it's it's making it feel uncomfortable because it's it's in wonder what's going on and it's not in you and by uh, now lightroom has a feature uh, the latest version of lightroom 5 um, 
that automatically, if you if you just get this closed, I think if you if I would I've never tried it with this particular photo, but I almost bet that this photo it would straighten out by with one click to 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 do this. And if That's it's right. not if it, if it didn't it use some slight adjustments it would it would fix. Another variation of this. Uh, yeah, I was trying to figure the difference on the kitchens, like the kitchen. What, like, why is that on the top one not any good? And right, what it, what you what you notice here is the oh, the refrigerator. You see that curve? Yeah, what, yeah. What happens? And, and again, this is really exaggerated, so so you can see it. But on many photos that are taken with a wide-angle lens, if you if you don't correct in Lightroom for what's called barrel distortion that the the edges you are going to be slightly curved and some people may notice it others may not um, but Lightroom can can tell from the photo what lens you use and wow. will automatically straighten it out wow. and so you you want to take the time to do that because again it's a distraction Got it. Uh, Interesting. The next one here is that um, this is the real estate photographer's uh, biggest problem is controlling the light. The fact is that the light, this is taken on a bright day, the light outside is a thousand times brighter than in the interior. And if you just put your camera on automatic, it will it will take a picture like this because it'll average out the inside and it'll make it look like there's a nuclear explosion going on outside. Um, this is more like what you want. And before I understood how to do this with lighting, and basically what this is what a flash does, it balances the level of light inside with the level of light outside. And you can control how bright the windows are with your flashes. And wow. now how do you uh, do that? Well you you do it with the, by by controlling your how much flash you use. This okay. one I this one I actually took before I understood all this with flashes and in my only <laughs> technique for controlling the outside brightness was I would come at twilight because the outside is very close to the inside. Right. <laughs> and right. And I come no, at twilight no matter what. And in fact, this case, the sellers were having a dinner party. <laughs> I wow. Still so twilight, just so everybody knows, twilight is considered, and correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, 15 minutes before sunset and 15 minutes after. Right. you got about a half hour window anywhere in between there should should work for you. Right. And you can right. shoot wonderful, wonderful interior shots uh, with, with beautiful uh, views out the windows. And that you can adjust in Lightroom and be just right. That's brilliant. So just shoot it at twilight. You know, somebody asked, how do you reduce the light? Well, just shoot it at twilight, which makes total sense. Very nice. Okay, cool. Right. Now the last, the last, well, the second, to the last one here is, is the, is coloration. Huge which, difference. Yeah. What's Huge. called co color balance. Again, this is exaggerated, but color balance problems comes can come from lights or walls that are painted red or wacky colors. It can also come from light bulbs. Light incandescent light bulbs tend to be redder and oranger. Uh, and outside tends to be bluer. Um, and can, can Lightroom fix this as well? Lightroom can fix this. Also modern cameras have a feature called auto white balance that they w um, you you put on auto white balance and it, you're basically telling the camera figure out what you think is the best white balance for this and and it'll do a pretty good job and then okay. you can touch it up in Lightroom to Got adjust it. it. Um, Very cool. The, the last uh, the last item here has to do with tours and and presenting photos. And it's the the principle that 
Um, the way real estate sites pre present photos, they tend to be too small. And absolutely, yeah, sad. Um, as a as a listing agent or a home seller, you want those those images to be big, and mm -hmm. that's really that's really what you get, or that's the major thing you get out of a tour, or having a real estate photographer doing a tour or you doing a tour is that the, the photos are much bigger and um, I think you want to, you really want, it's really worth um, the extra money you might spend on a tour and nowadays you really don't have to spend that much on tours. Um, uh, and Jim, but, Jim brings up a good point. Jim says cloudy days work, uh, work better too. When it's not so bright out, where the sun's not blaring down on the house. Yes, cloudy absolutely. Cloudy days work good. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, cloudy days are. It, when with that bright sun, you you get a lot more difficulties controlling yeah. the brightness. Yeah. Right. Okay. And Dude, I uh, amazing, amazing. Like a lot of compliments, a lot of stuff that I had no. So um, here's clarify. So clarify. Let's see, Deborah. Thanks for being here. Lightroom is uh, soft software that works with Photoshop or is it a version of Photoshop and is complete software? Great question. You know, you, you, well, it, it will work with Photoshop, but it is But you don't much, need it to use Lightroom. You don't need Photoshop. Photoshop okay. is very or difficult Lightroom. to use. Lightroom yeah, is very, very difficult right. to learn. And so Lightroom is 100% by itself. You don't need to buy this to that to get this to work. It's like Light, Lightroom is 100% all by itself. Yep. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Awesome. Never heard of that one. Is Lightroom a software? Yes. So that's all there. What is Lightroom? Lightroom's a software that want God, I mean, Lightroom fixes your um, curved edges, fixes your lighting, um, helps you with the lighting period. Right. It's a lot of stuff that it does, right? Yeah, it's it's actually I mean, nowadays with it does things that could never be done if you shoot in, in what's called raw format so that yeah. all of the pixels come out of your camera and you uh -huh. give that to Lightroom, you can make major changes uh, in the exposure. You can turn a dark room into a bright room really easily and many people do this without using much flash at all. Okay. And like uh, Aaron's asking, how do you get your twilight times? Just You just kind of find out when, like, do you kind of hang out there and take different pictures at different times and see which ones come out best? There's actually, um, there's several, there's probably four or five different um, uh, iPhone apps and iPad apps that will, oh. that will tell you, I, see, I can't remember the one that I use here. The one I use is called Light Track, L-I-G-H. T R A C. Is that for it, iPhone? That's for iPhone and for iPad. And you can That'll tell you. The great thing about it is you as a photographer you can when you're making the appointment, you can see what what time you're gonna be there and see what angle the this is coming there and it will also tell you when sunrise is and when sunset is and And it's light L I G H T T R A C is that correct? That's right. Light track. Okay, I'll post that on the on the um, group page as well. Um, very cool. So that yeah, that looks like a very cool app, and it doesn't look like it costs anything. It's a, um, it's, a it's a couple bucks, I think. A couple bucks, yeah, Larry. Uh, can Larry give any hints on how to photograph a room where the view of the outside is also properly exposed? Yeah, that's the right. That's the crux. There's a there's a number of ways, um, and I can't. You don't have time left here to go into all of them. I know, I know, I know. Basically, yeah. you you use flash by by brightening the interior with flash, and you typically use multiple flashes. And my blog has a lot of stuff on this. Um, okay. You you. You could go at twilight. That's one. You use flash. Another yeah. another way is is you do what's called bracketing. You take a series 
of photo of photos from very dark to very light, and then there's a thing, a Lightroom plugin called Lightroom Infuse, that smushes that all together and takes the best pixels out of each one, and does it just like you had had been using a flash. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Eric brought up a good point here, and I would recommend this. And we're gonna, Larry, you want to put your blog up on the screen and like go to your website and put because everybody's asking where that is. So, um, and Eric, Lily, I appreciate you saying this. Would encourage agents to go to the directory on Larry's PFRE site uh, to find a pro photographer in their area. Yeah, which I didn't yeah, know you even had that. So that was that was very. He's generous. talking about this real estate photographer directory. It ha it has a it's a worldwide directory okay. of, and the other thing it does, what I point out is that um, it, the, the people that win my contest get a free, get a free entry here and it marks them as being a, a, a monthly winner and it puts them at the top okay. and they are the ones that are, are, are chosen by their peers to the, uh, to be the very best of the best. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. So everybody votes on it. Right, very cool, a, Larry. I, I appreciate your time. I know we're at the top of the hour, and I I know you're busy. So and I uh, we have a great group. A lot of lot tons and tons and tons of questions. So I would highly recommend um, going to Larry's blog uh, and like following. Like, how would somebody follow your blog so they could communicate with you if they had a question or communicate like well, maybe. Right. Right there, right up here in the upper right. right. Okay, perfect. If you want to ask me a question, you just click here and ask email me a Larry. question. If Very you cool. want, if you want an email every time I post, I post about four or five days a week. Okay, you, wow. You just subscribe with you put your email in here, and the, okay. down here on the left hand side, right here, is the uh, is the book we've been presenting out. Okay. Um, All right. And he's going to fix that link. So if you want the book, go to his site. Um, great stuff. If you if you have a question, you can email Larry. If you want to get his blog post, which I'd highly recommend, just to kind of keep up on what he's talking about, because you're going to get comments that come along with what he's talking about. And like he said, we know we argue about this and that, which is a great back and forth. Well, what about this? What about that? And there's that lens right there that you were talking about, um, the Sigma 10 to 20 millimeter. Actually, That's this that right is, there. This yeah. is not the one I was talking about. The one oh, I not, okay. Newer, okay. But um, okay. Yeah. There's also Lightroom tutorials. Lightroom right? tutorials. Yep. So it looks like he's got just about everything dialed in here. So um, Larry, I sincerely appreciate you sharing your precious time with us and giving us some awesome pointers. And and I think I speak for everybody. And if you, um, yeah, just I would go to photo photograph photography for real estate dot net photography for real estate dot net. And uh, of course, to get a copy of this recording and PowerPoint, contact the loan professional that sent you here. I'm going to be posting some stuff on our private fan, fan page. If you're new to uh, being here, just uh, request to get in. We'll let you in. We're about 9,000 strong, almost 9,000 now. And um, Larry, I sincerely appreciate your time and your expertise and all the, all the time you spend in putting, putting all this together for us. Oh, it's, it's fun. I enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you again. So, hey, guys, we'll see you same time, same place next week on Agent Mastermind. Everybody be safe. And get out there, enjoy the summer, and uh, we'll see you on the web. Have a, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.